How you doing? Bless you. you are the salt of the earth. That's our, uh, mm -hmm. our lesson tonight. You are the salt of the earth. You ready? We on? Yeah. Oh, God bless you. Thank you for joining us in Bible study tonight. We thank you. Amen. Tonight, God has been good and God has been kind. And we thank God for what God is doing <coughs> this season. All right, we're on lesson eight. You are the salt of the earth. Now, I was saying earlier, salt is used for a lot of things. I'm going to say it again. Salt is used for a lot of things. We salt, when we use salt, we season our food with it. Amen. We put salt. I don't know what it is, but sometimes I use, I, I, I stop using salt. I started using Mr. Dash or Miss Dash or whatever it's called. Yeah. Miss Dash. Yeah. Uh, and it's not it's not salt. Mm -hmm. it's, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. But I started using it. You see what I'm saying? So what happens when you start doing that? Then you start losing the taste of real salt. Mm -hmm. And you don't need it. I remember <laughs> I was so addicted to salt. Amen. I would taste something and it, 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 I would just put salt in it anyway. Amen. Amen. And so I was saying... Um, I went to weigh in the other day, and uh, uh, I told uh, the doctor, I said, you know, I said, it's a funny thing with me because a lot of times I said, I said, either I got a sweet tooth or I, I want salt. Either one. It goes either way. So she said, what did you do? I said, I went out and got me four bags of salitos, the hot ones. And she said, what? I said, you know what I was going to do? I was trying to pace myself. I made mean, two tonight. And then two tomorrow and break it down like that. Well, it didn't happen. So Elizabeth, I ate. No, I didn't eat all at one time. But I'm getting to that. Wait for the punchline. So I ate two then. Start watching a basketball game. And I ate two more. So there's only eight go in there. Come in that bag. And then I said, well, why? There's only four left. So I'm eating another two. And then I have two tomorrow. So I done ate six. Mr. Ed, that one, those two, I don't know, they just got good. Those were the best ones in there. And I said, Lord, I'm mercy. I said, well, there's two left. So I said, I'll eat this one, and I'll save the other one for tomorrow. Well, guess what? I ate that one then. That one was so good. I said, I got to open up the, another bag. So before I know it, I ate three bags of salito before I knew it. So I went to the doctor the next day, and my blood pressure was so high, they tried to admit me. But I said, I know what I did. <laughs> don't talk, call them 911. I know what I did. She said, what did you do? I said, I ate all them salitos that I had no business eating. <laughs> Didn't drink a lot of water. Should have flushed it out. Yeah. So a lot of times you got to be careful with salt. Yeah. Am I right? And the Bible let us know we are the salt of the earth. Yeah, right. Amen. We are the salt of the earth. Amen. You see what I'm saying? So people should look at you and see God. Amen. I'm going to say it again. People should look at you and see God. We are a living example. Thank you. We are a living example. We are a living epistle. That's right. Amen. And I say this a lot. You might be the only Bible somebody reads. Amen. Amen. So they're looking at you. They're trying to see what you're doing. They're trying to see what's going on with you. Amen. Am I right? Now you say you live in this life. You say you live in this life. Then they expect you to live it. They're expecting you to do it. But a lot of times what happens, ooh, ooh. a lot of times we allow folks or we allow circumstances mm -hmm. to make us turn right. our back on God. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. The Bible says you reigns from the just, mm -hmm. just as well as what? Mm -hmm. The unjust. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So let me tell you something. You're going to have some difficult days. You're going to have some difficult situations that you're going to encounter. But you can't give up now. Amen. Amen. The Bible lets us know that we ought to encourage our own self in the Lord. Yes, sir. Everybody's not going to validate you no, for what you're going through. No, Sometimes you just have to get on your knees and begin right. to pray. Amen. And let me tell you something. We're living in a day and time now that prayer is so vital and essential to the believer. Yes, it is. I'm going to say that y'all looking at me for yes, it. Is. It's so essential to the believer. Men that ought to always pray Amen. and not faint. And a lot of times, what's going on in the world? You know, I told somebody this other day. You know why Jesus, had, the Lord, hadn't really destroyed this earth? Because you got some praying folks. That's right. You got some praying folks that's crying out yeah. and spare not. They cry loud. Amen. Because if it was up to the devil, he would destroy this world. 
But we got some folk, amen. And thank God we have an advocate. Amen. Hello, somebody. So let us get into our, our scriptures. Second Kings 2 and 21. Who has that? Sister Briscoe. Admin. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. Hallelujah. There shall not be from this any more death of barren land. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he said, I've healed these waters. Mm -hmm. So in other words, some more death. Let me tell you something. We're living in a time now. The enemy is so busy that he tries to persuade us to get away from God. Mm -hmm. He tries to really talk to you. And that's why I tell you, church, it's so vital and so important for us to have the spirit of discernment. Amen. And the spirit of discernment works two ways. Mm -hmm. It works for you and the other person. Mm -hmm. You should be able to discern when you're wrong. That's right. You should be able to discern when you're not right with God. Amen. Am I right? You should be able to discern when your brother, amen, when your brother and sister is not right, you should be able to discern that. But other than that, you have to discern when I'm not right. Amen. Lord, make me right. Stop. We have to stop looking at somebody else. Amen. And we got to search ourselves. Amen. Amen. Lord, what is in me that I need to be, what it need to be taken out? Amen. What can, how can I get closer to you? Mm -hmm. I need, I need to get closer. We got to stop. Amen. Let me tell you something. We have to seek after the Holy Ghost like never before. Amen. The Bible says these kind come out by what? Fasting and praying. And we're living in a time now that these kinds are in the church. You got witchcraft. You, oh, I can't get no help in here. You got people saying they doing spells on churches. Amen. Don't you know there's demon assigned to your church? There's demon assigned to your area? You got to learn how to fight the devil? Yes. You got to learn how to get rid of him. Yes, get him out of your life. Yes. Oh, I can't get no help in here. Yes, but you can't do it if you're a weak saint. Yes. Amen. You can't do it if you ain't got a prayer life. Amen. A lot of times we don't have a prayer life. We talk on the mountaintop, but we, we don't have a prayer life. And that's why the devil's always beating us up. We don't have a prayer life. Come on. We don't talk to the Lord. Yes, Amen. Amen. Every day you should be talking to the Lord. How can you get instructions from him if you don't talk to him? Amen. How can you know his will for your life if you don't talk to him? And you can't just talk to him on Sunday. Some of us want to have a Sunday only conversation. I only talk to him when I come to church. But after church, no. You got to learn how to talk to him. You got to learn how to talk to him. And when you talk to him, listen to his voice. Listen. And he'll tell you where you need to go. He'll tell you what you need to do. But you got to learn how to listen. That's why I say, if you spend an hour in prayer, you spend at least 30 minutes in listening Amen. for what he has to tell you. And the man said, he talked to you in a small, steel voice. Yes. Am I right? Amen. Do we recognize his voice? Amen. So you got to learn how to recognize his voice. Amen. Hello, somebody. Hello. Amen. And I see this. Sometimes people say, well, Pastor Strong, I don't know how to recognize his voice. Let me tell you how to do it. Anytime that God give you something, He's gonna confirm it by His word. Yes, He will. Amen. Yes, He will. And then if you don't, if you don't confirm it by His word, when you try to rebuke it, it will not go away. But if you rebuke it and it goes away, it's not of God. Because the devil can't come under the blood. The blood steal. Oh, I thought somebody take that and run with it. I'm gonna say it again. The blood steal. Works. Works. So we got to learn how to listen to him. How are you going to be a son of the heard when you're not listening? Amen. Am I right? We're not studying. It's all right to read, but you got. I tell people, it's all right to read, especially preaching. It's all right to read, but you got to study. Amen. Amen. You can read it and not get an understanding of what you read. I mean, you're preaching ten different things. I don't want you to start with the lion's den and then come hit me with uh, the Hebrew boys. And uh, uh no, no, no. Let's call, let it coincide with each other. Amen. The Bible says, "All that you get, get an understanding." Yeah. Am I right? So we got to be in, and then you have to prepare. Yes. In this Christian walk, you got to prepare because you don't know where the enemy's coming from. Amen. Sometimes the enemy's in your family. Amen. I can't get no help in here. Sometimes the enemy is laying next to you. 
You know that movie, Sleeping with the Enemy? Come on out of here. Some of y'all saw that movie. The whole time she was sleeping with the enemy. That's what I'm saying. A lot of times people want to see your demise. That's why you have to be careful. Be careful who you telling your dreams to. Be careful who you telling what God has given you. Because some people will take it and run with it. And they will try to set you up for failure. But let me tell you something. One thing about God. If it's for you. It's for you. Can't nobody mess it up. But you. I'm going to say it again. Can't no one mess up what God has for you. But you. And God is not going to send your mail to my address. Why? Because he know yours. So you don't have to dig a ditch for nobody. A lot of times we dig ditches for people. You don't have to dig a ditch for nobody. The Bible says his blessing will overtake you. Am I right? But you got to be in position. You have to know, understand. A lot of times we want God to bless us and bless us. But what are we doing for God? What are we doing for? God, I want this. God, I want that. We got a Christmas list. But what's on the other side of the list? What are you going to do for God? Alright, give me Job 6 and 6. Can favorless food be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? Can, in other words, does food have to be seasoned? Now, y'all know everybody in here likes seasoned food. Yes. And you taste it. Some high me I taste it. This is like hospital food. No disrespect, uh -huh. Mrs. The Bell. But hospital food is the nasty food in the world. No season, no nothing. You know, when I'm in the house, I can't wait to get out. And first thing I want is some good. And then when they and then when they put you on a liquid something or a liquid this and liquid that, oh my goodness. Oh, I tell you. It seemed like nothing. Even the liquid tastes nasty. I'm healed. By its stripes. So, when you don't put salt and stuff, you can taste it. And the first thing when you cook... Uh-oh, come on. I'm talking to you cooks now. First thing you do when you cook, what do you do? Taste it. And a lot of times, I, I would tell people this. My mother was a good cook. And I said a lot of times, she never did measure. You know, some of y'all put measuring, get measuring cups, and you put. She never did that. Mm -hmm. What she would do is taste, right. mm -hmm. and taste it, or she'll say, "Taste this, boy. See what it tastes like." Yeah. Do I need more salt? Do I need more sugar? Mm -hmm. Your mother never did that. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So y'all was the taster. Yes. Okay. So we grew up in almost the same household. Yes. <laughs> but she, Amen, would tell or can tell by tasting it that it was off. So what are you saying, Pastor Strong? When you're in the church and something's off, you should be able to know it. Yes, Amen. Thank you. Amen. You should know when that prophet is not telling you the truth. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's why I said you don't get in everybody's line. No, you Thank don't. you. No, you don't. Everybody can lay hands on you. No. Everybody should lay hands on you. No. Because you don't know what that person is. Okay. Come on. It's the truth. You don't know their motives. No. Some people got some evil motives. Yes, they do. And then when they lay hands on you, watch their hands. Yes. Watch how they touch on you. Yes. Amen. I always say, I'm from the old school. We don't just touch a woman. No, you get another woman to come up. Yes. And whatever you try to, you put her hand. Oh, I can't get yes. no help in there. You put her hands on it. Yes. Some people just trying to get us a feel. Yes. Come on out of here, devil. That's, right. That's a sick person. Yes. But you don't know. You and Like I said, everybody in the church is not saved. Yes. Everybody in the church they ain't holy. So you got to understand. Listen, a lot of times when the food is not, don't have enough season, what do we do? We put more in there. Yes. We see it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, I don't know, but some of our food is just too salty. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some people food, you can't even eat it. Yes. yes. Hello, somebody. Amen. And you don't know if it's, I ain't mad. Something that's heavy. My mom used to say heavy-handed. Mm -hmm. Well, you just heavy-handed on that salt. And I didn't understand what heavy handed, but I know what it means now. I put too much salt in it. Amen. And you can ruin stuff putting too much salt in it. Yes, can. I can't get no help in here. All right, Mark 9, 49 and 50. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other. Right. Amen. So, so how do you lose saltiness? You got to learn how to repent. Amen. Amen. 
when you need to get close, you need to get closer to God. You see, that's what I said. You should know when you have walked away from him. Yep. When you can't feel his touch, yep. when you can't feel the anointing is going on in the church, and you're the only one looking like you don't know what's going on, something's wrong. Yep. Yep. Something's wrong. Yep. Fire's falling, and it never hits you. Something wrong. Lord, what's wrong with me? And that's why I said when you come to church, hey man, you got to understand, you could be a backslider sitting in the seat. You wonder why the spirit's not moving. Why is it hitting everybody else and not me? Then you, something's wrong with your line. Your line is not clear. That's why you got to search me, oh Lord. Whatever's in me, take it out. Amen. I don't know what's going on, Lord, but I want to feel your presence. I want to feel your power. Amen. Restore the joy back unto me. Amen. Because sometimes we sit in the enemy, mess with the soul. And that's when you come to church. You got to come to church. Stop thinking about anything or anybody else. I'm coming to get what God has for me. Because what God has for me, it is. It's for me. What God has for me, it is for me. But I have to be in position. Because sometimes we're not in position. We want God to bless us. But see, God knows when you're in position to bless you. Because if you need the blessing now, you're going to mess up the blessing. Yes. Yeah. That's why he tell you to wait. They that wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. Sometimes you just got to wait. And while you're waiting, keep praying while you're waiting. And let me tell you something. God will work things. God will work things out in your life. God will work things out in your home. God will work things out on the job. You just got to be patient. Sometimes we get impatient. I know because I, I myself, sometimes I get impatient. I want the Lord to do it right now, right now, right now. We have a microwave generation, amen, mentality. I Lord, do it now. I can't wait next month. I want you to do it now. And the Lord said, hold on, hold on, Reverend, hold on. I got you. Am I right? But then we still, Lord, I, my time is up, man. You're looking at me. Oh, okay. The Lord, the Lord. <laughs> I'm just listening. Okay, all right. <laughs> you just looking at me like you know my time. You know, but you gotta understand. A lot of times, what happens is we want the Lord to do something. The Lord is telling you to hold on, be patient. Am I right? And sometimes we don't want to be patient. We want to right then and there. And the Lord said, No, it's not time for you. It's just like you get. I tell people, preachers, special. I tell people this: going into ministry. Some of you, you know, sometimes you're called, but don't mean the Lord wants you to go right then and there. The, manifest, the manifestation might not come to later. Yes. Am I right? Some, just because you call, don't mean you go get your Bible and a briefcase and go out. That's right, that's you have to be trained. Right. What to do and what not to do. That's right. Because the devil will get you. Right. Yes, the devil will get you. I had a person come to me, not too long ago, and say, Pastor, I'm a preacher now. Oh, oh okay. The Lord called you? Yes, I believe he called me. Okay. But I'm a different type of preacher. I said, okay. I'm not one of those preachers going to be the time to be on the street ministry. I said, okay. I said, are you equipped? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You got the Holy Ghost? No, but I'm ready. Oh, I said, dear. well, you done messed up right now. Oh, let's oh, back up. I said, let's back up, man. Let's back up. Oh, dear. I said, if I were you, I would get the Holy Ghost. Seek for the Holy Ghost. Because then you have power. Because access, one and eight. But you shall receive power after. after. Okay. So we're in the right, right Bible. Okay, after the Holy Ghost. So I said, get the Holy Ghost and then go out. Well, guess what? He went out. A month later, he came back to me. And said he had to put the Bible down. Why? Because he's going to jump on somebody because they're going to jump on him. And I said, that's why I told you. When you go out there because you're going to encounter folks that's not going to listen to you. And you can't make people listen to you. He said, why? Well, they was out there on the street. I wanted them to listen to me. You can't. Yes, we all want people to listen to you. One waters, one plant, but God gets a what? Increase. The increase. So I said, just yes, you, you water. And let somebody else do the planting. But he wanted them to get it right then and right there. And they rejected him. He got angry. And he said, I, I got so angry. I want to fight them. And I told him, you're not ready. And he said, you know what, Pastor Strong? I apologize because I'm not ready. No, anytime you get angry like that because people are not accepting the word of God coming from you, then you're not ready. Amen. So get into ministry, you got to be ready because you're the soul. Amen. And people are looking at you. Amen. And not only that, I told him, I said, those guys are looking at your life. Mm -hmm. And you just got angry. Do you think they want to hear you? Mm, that's right. You start cussing them out. Do you think they want to hear you? Mm, they don't want to hear you no more. You lost them. Yeah. You just lost them. So now, you got to let somebody else witness to them. 
Because they're not going to listen to you anymore. Let me tell you something. Love and kindness have I drawn me. Sometimes people are not going to listen to you. I don't care what you do. Amen. Some people just not accept it from you. It's not you per se. They don't think you qualify. Right. Yeah. You know, they don't think you qualify. Well, well, why is God using you? Why is not God using me? Why is God using you? All right, let's get Luke. Yes, you got a question? Yes. All right, go ahead. Do you feel that you can become too salty and have a big head? I can't hear. Say it again. What you said? Do you feel that you can become too salty and that is that a sign of being having a big head? Or yes. Or? Yes, I can feel you get too caught up in yourself. You know, and this is why I tell, this, this, this is why I told somebody the other day, this is what the Lord, I, I believe the Lord do. Like one minute you can preach a message and seem like you preach the chandeliers come out down. Mm -hmm. And the next time you preach, you can bump. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what? And the Lord said, because you're getting too haughty. Mm -hmm. You're getting too into yourself. So I'm going to have to bring you down. Bring you down. Mm -hmm. And that's how it sometimes is. You know, that's why you see a lot of mega churches and mega pastors Amen. They do stuff and it's like they thought that they think they're not going to get caught because of their position and their title. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden God will expose. Yeah. But let me tell you something. God is not going to let you mess up his church. I know that. He will expose some things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when they expose it and reveal it, and there's nothing you can do. And then sometimes it takes years. Sometimes it takes months. Sometimes you don't know when God's going to do it, but he will do it. So a lot of times, yes, to your question, yes, sometimes people be too salty and they get beside themselves. Amen. But do you feel that they're out of the will of the Lord at that point? Yes. Because they operate in flesh. Anytime you operate in flesh, you're out of the will of the Lord. Because you're trying to, amen, look at me. We come here, amen, when you preach, it's not about you. No. It's about him. Amen. So when you make it about you, then he steps back. Yes. He says, okay, you don't need me. It's about you. All right, preacher. So, no, that's not, you have to learn make it about God. And that's why I say you preach in season, out of season. Preach when you feel good. Preach when you don't feel good. Because it's not about you. Amen. Just because I'm sick, I'm still going to preach. Because it's not about me. Amen. It's about him. And my, and my weakness, he's made oh. strong. Mm -hmm. So I know just because I don't feel good. He, amen. Sometimes I come in here feeling bad. But once I start preaching, it just seems like everything just left off me. Amen. All right. Give me Luke. Mm -hmm. We're at 14, 34, and 35. Yes. All right. Mr. Ed. Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its flavor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Right. So he said, if the Lord has lost his uh, savor, what is it good for? Nothing. So in other words, and you lose your salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. And a lot of people, this is what happened. They get discouraged and they walk away from God. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. Once you walk away from God, it's harder to get back. Mm -hmm. How do you know? I've done it. Mm -hmm. And it was hard for me to get back. It was like a hard road. And it seemed like the devil, amen, he put so much on me not to get back. That everything I was, you know, and I wanted to be just as bad because people would tell me out in the world, you don't belong here. Mm -hmm. And I want to let them know I do belong here. So you don't belong here. And you know, and it's just like the devil. They always said, aren't you the preacher? No, I ain't no preacher. If I'm the preacher, why I be at the club? Hello, somebody. Trying to make you feel, they try to you know, slight you. Oh, I remember you used to preach over at so-and-so's church. Yeah, that was years ago. That ain't me no more. Well, you don't look right out here. Well, if you so saved, then you, what you doing out here? Oh, I can't get no help in here. <laughs> People try to make, and see, let me tell you something. When you have that on you, people know. Yes, they do. Amen. They know. They know something. And don't you know sometimes God will use angels to come and tell you yes, yes. things about yourself. Yes. Get back in church. Yes, let me tell you, warning comes before destruction. And let me tell you something. If you don't get back, amen, something, he'll allow something to happen to you to push you back. Am I right about? Yeah. Did he do that to uh, to, to Jonah? Yeah. Hey Amen. He didn't want to go to Nineveh because he was prejudiced. Oh, yeah. The Lord said, "You need to go to Nineveh." He said, "No, no, I'm not going. Throw me overboard." Oh, yeah. They threw him overboard, and some swallowed him up. Sure did. But then the God made him spew him out. Let me tell you something. When you have lost your savor, when you have lost your saltiness, what are you good for? The Bible said, "What are you good for?" Exactly. 
If I can't, if I'm not gonna make it to heaven, I sure don't want to go to hell. Because the Bible said hell is enlarging itself what every day. It wasn't made for us. He didn't make it for us. But a lot of us are going. You have some bishops, some pastors, some missionaries. Oh, I can't get no help. Amen. Amen. You gonna have a lot of folk because they didn't do. It. Where were you? But I, I, you, I fed, I clothed. Not in my name. You didn't. You didn't do it unto me. But Lord, I thought sometimes you could be doing the wrong thing for the wrong reason. That's yes, right. it. That's it. Watch your, watch your motives. That's, That's right. it. A lot of times people do the wrong thing, but then they want the glory. Like I said, a lot of times, anytime you do something for somebody, you ain't got to take the glory. Yeah. If God told you to do it, then do it. You ain't got to get up and testify. You ain't got to Come tell on. nobody. Come on. Oh, amen. I did so-and-so. I paid a bill. If the Lord told you to do that, why would you get up and testify exactly. that? Right. Amen. You just got your, you just got your reward. Right. Amen. Amen. If the Lord told you to do something, you ain't got to tell nobody. Just do it and be quiet. Amen. He's going to reward you. <laughs> but a lot of times people get up and say, oh, you know, our boss is also she didn't have no food, refrigerator wasn't working, bought a new refrigerator, bought a this, bought a dryer, and she won't even talk to me. Wow. <laughs> we don't need to know all that. Amen. That's why a lot of times, I tell people this all the time, and it's true. That's why a lot of times, I don't know, some pastors do it, some pastors don't. I don't do it. I don't have testimony service. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know how to testify. Mm -hmm. A testimony is not the refrigerator stop running and all of a sudden you prayed and it kicked back home well I lost somebody. or Johnny lost your brother's homework and then you picked it up down the street that's not a testimony that's not a praise report and sometimes people feel that's a testimony and then it's like we always out try to do the next one so she testified for 20 minutes you're going to do it for 25 that's 45 minutes out of the service right then and then you're going to try to correct the church. You never get up and correct the church when you're in testimony. But people start correcting the church. And that's why a lot of pastors, you know what? I'm done with that. Because it starts to become a competition. Oh, she was, but pastor, you let her go 20. Why don't you give me five? You must like her more than you like me. A praise report. And sometimes we do it still. A praise report. God has done something good. Now, he does something for you good every day when he wakes you up. That's good enough. Hello, somebody. But a praise report is something just like, you know, something like like you said the other day about your job. Mm -hmm. Somebody mess with your job and all of a sudden they come to you and say, I'm sorry. That's yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Or, hey man, you don't know how you're going to pay that bill. And God made a way. Amen. Hey man, you're getting ready to get evicted, but God stepped in. Amen. Car was in, hey man, house was in foreclosure, but God stepped in. Those are praise reports. Yes. All right, let me get out of here. All right, where we at? Colossians 4 and 6. Colossians 4 and 6. Sister Tamika, please. Let your speech always with grace. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Right. So you, you got to watch your answers. Amen. Soft answers turn away what? Wrath. Right. 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 So watch how you talk. A lot of times we don't realize how we talk to people. That's right. And sometimes it's not what you say, it's your delivery. Amen. Amen. You can say something, but your delivery is off. So now, when your delivery is off, then you say, well, I, I didn't say nothing wrong. No, it's how you said it. Yeah. Right. There's a way you talk to people, no way you don't. Yes, you wouldn't want nobody talking to you like that. No, Am I right? Yeah. Especially, amen, when we, we brothers and sisters in Christ, there's a way we should talk to one another. That's right. amen. And if you don't have an understanding, or you misinterpret what I said, then come to me. You ain't got to call Sally. You ain't got to call Jane. You ain't got to call Sister Watermelon, Sister Keller. All you got to do is talk to me. I'm the one who said it. But we start, that's how rumors start spreading all over the church. Because all of a sudden, say, did you see the way she talked? Girl, did you hear you, you need to go in and check her. Or boy, you need to go do something. No, no. I'm going to be still. And I'm going to let the Lord check her. Amen. Don't you know you get more accomplished by praying than you do by talking? Right. Yes, you do. I can't say rewind. You get more accomplished by praying than you do by talking. Yes, you do. And that's why I tell you, if you just pray more. Pray. Yes. Pray. That's I'm telling you, prayer is the only thing that can change anything. Amen. Let me get out of here. Ezekiel 4, 47, 1 and 12. Okay. Sister Mary. Okay, the man brought me back to the entrance in the temple and I saw water. Coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east for the temple face east. 
The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. Amen. And 12? Yes. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Amen. Amen. So, letting us know, and I say this all the time, we're not judging. We don't judge. Well, we fruit inspectors. You have to watch. Po you say that too? <laughs> yeah. And I tell people, I don't judge. I watch people fruit. Amen. Now, if you're an apple tree, I don't expect you to have prunes. Right. Amen. Amen. If you're a nectarine, I don't expect you to have bananas. That's right. You cross contaminated. Right. Am I right? So I expect you to be who you are. If you're grapes, I expect you to get grapes. That's right. Hello. If you're oranges, I expect you to get oranges. That's right. Am I right? If you're apples, I expect you to get apples. But what happened is, we try to be something that we're not. And that's when we mess up. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible lets us know, what are you good for? Mm -hmm. What are you good for? Mm -hmm. Am I right? And that's what I'm saying. Sometimes people try to be something that they're not. Mm -hmm. and that's why they have ten, ten different titles and they ain't serving one of them. Mm -hmm. I'm this, I'm that, I'm DD this, I'm DD that, I'm DD that. That's fine. But what are you doing with them? Mm -hmm. Amen. Think about it. Too much is given, that's much is required. Right. So if, you, if the Lord's giving you all that, you better be doing something with it. That's right. You're going to be judged on that. That's right. Amen. People don't understand that. You're going to be judged on everything that you do. Yeah. Everything that you over, you're going to be judged. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. I remember Bishop Patterson, the late Bishop Patterson said something. He said, I, he said, I went to the Lord and he said, I was talking about he had a mega church. He got about five, ten thousand members. And he said, I, I, I wish today that I didn't have a mega church because he said I'm going to be judged on everybody in that church and some people I don't even know Amen. he said some people I don't even know he said a football player came up and paid his tithes and he said I didn't know that he would go to my church mm -hmm. but he said I got my Super Bowl check mm -hmm. and he said do you want me to put it in the pan or do you want it, Do you want me to smell it to you or give it to you, hand it to you and Bishop uh, Patterson said how much is it the guy said I think a hundred something thousand he said no meet me in the office <laughs> <laughs> No, meet me in my office. Hello, somebody. So, a lot of things that, amen, when you have a mega church, a mega ministry, you're going to be judged on that. Folks that you don't even know, you're going to be judged on. So, whatever you're doing for the Lord, make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Amen. Now, if you're going to be salt, be salt. What are you saying, Pastor Strong? If you're going to be saved, be saved. Amen. Don't be in and out. Amen. amen. Don't be lukewarm. The Bible says if you're lukewarm, he'll spew you. Out of his mouth. And that's how some of us are. We lukewarm Christians. One minute we say him on Sunday, next minute we can't find you through the week. Amen. I'm gonna say that again, dude. You, we call for a concert, you hear? Call we call for uh 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 uh, uh what do you call whatever concert, uh, whatever, all that stuff. But we say a revival, can't find you. Prayer meeting, where you at? So we gotta understand, don't lose your saltiness. Don't lose it. I don't care what comes and goes. I don't care what comes your way. I don't care what happens. Do not lose your saltiness. And let me tell you what I'm make you lose your saltiness. This is for free. Sin will make you lose your saltiness. Am I right about it? Amen. Don't compromise. And I know it's hard. Don't, don't, don't think I don't know. Sometimes it's hard because the flesh just wants to do what it wants to do. And that's why you have to bring your flesh under subjection. That's why we fast so much. Keep this flesh under subjection. Because if you don't, your flesh will run wild. Your flesh, the devil will have you doing something, any and everything, if you don't keep your flesh under subjection. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Is there any questions before we close? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions online? Any questions? No? No questions? Yes. I just want to say today at work, I had a... Um, Lady, she came and she started talking about she has a lemon tree uh -huh. in her yard and her neighbor has an orange tree. Mm -hmm. She said, but all of a sudden, her lemon tree, when she would pull the lemons off, they were like oranges. Mm -hmm. And she was like, 
I don't know what happened. She said, I don't know what happened. She said, the only thing I could think of is that the roots went down and kind of, she said it got cross contaminated. <laughs> and I was like, wow. <laughs> and that's true. Sometimes you get cross contaminated. Amen. But you know what? Amen. All you have to do, if you lose your saltiness, just repent. Amen. I'm all right about it. Amen. Next week lesson. Next week lesson. God said the same delay is coming. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about. Let me see what we're talking about. Jesus is Savior of the world. Jesus is a Savior of the world. Amen. God bless you. Before we close, before we close, we have a preacher in our midst. And I'll be remiss. Amen. If I don't let this preacher. Amen. I'm from the old school. Anytime a preacher, a missionary in your midst, you allow them, you yield the flow. And you allow them to have words. And I'm going to do that this time. God bless you. Thank you, Facebook family and friends, for joining us. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Post and share. God bless you. Smile. All right. Dr. Worley, God bless you, man. Thank you for being here.